Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty well today. I'm going to be bringing you another tutorial today for the F16, and this one is going to be about steer point navigation. So, as you can see, once again, we are starting off in the mission editor, and the reason for that is I'm going to just show you how to very quickly input your steer points in the mission editor. If you were, you know, creating a mission beforehand. So, we'll click on this aircraft icon, click on type, scroll down to F16. Put that where we want it. I'm going to set our altitude here. This is our starting altitude to 20,000 feet. We'll leave the speed the same and we're going to change our skill to player. Then we want to make sure we have add boxed. We're going to put one here and then we'll just do, I don't know, something like that. Doesn't really matter. Now the altitude and the speed here, these don't matter that much unless you are setting this up for an AI aircraft that's not player controlled because that will be the speed and altitude that they fly at on the way to the steer point. Um, as far as I'm aware, the speed that you input does not make any difference for you in your aircraft, but the altitude can, because if you have it at 20,000 feet, for example, it will be, that's where it will be when you see it on the HUD. So, but generally speaking, it doesn't really matter because the autopilot system and everything else, you'll still be able to navigate to it the same. But what I will do, however, is say we wanted, we had a target that was at this airfield. I like to set the steer point to zero. So let's press zero and then it will automatically set that to whatever the ground level is. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because if we have a targeting pod, the targeting pod will automatically slew to whatever steer point you have selected. And it's a lot easier to find targets if you have a steer point or, you know, at a target area. If that's on the ground already, then it'll be easier for you to find that target area. Whereas if it's at 20,000 feet over this, you're still going to be having to find the target area anyway. So that's just what I generally do for this. Okay, so here we are now in the jet. And... The most important page here for us is the HSD page, so we're going to be focusing on this a lot, and I'm going to talk about through, you know, talk through what a lot of the symbology is here. So first of all, we have our range here on this side. Currently sets to 60 nautical miles. We can go up to 240 and down to 15. And each one of these circles here, the purple circles, refers to, you know. This is the full distance 60, and this is two thirds, and then one third, so 60, 40, 20 in this case. We also have this little triangle here, which uh, points directly north. And then here we have where all of our steer points are. So if I zoom out, you can see where all those are. We just set those in the mission editor. The hollow circles there indicate all of our steer points. The line through them is the flight path. And the solid white circle is the steer point that we currently have selected, in this case, steer point one, which is down there. We also have these two lines, which are the, ra are the fire control radar ghost cursor. So we can see on our FCR, as we move this around, it's also going to move our cursor around here. If we use DMS, display management switch down, we can make this soy, and then we can slew this around. For various purposes, you can use this to select the waypoint that way, is one of its functions. This here, these numbers, is the bearing and distance to our fire control radar cursor where that's pointing. If we make this soy, we have numbers on the other side, which is the bearing and distance to, from or from the selected steer point to where our our cursor here is. If we had a bullseye set up, then these numbers would refer to the distance from the bullseye to the cursor. Now, with the HSD soy sense of interest, if we press the field of view button, we can go into the expanded modes in the same way that you can do on the radar, or you can also do the same thing by pressing this button where it says norm here and this will do that wherever your cursor is so if you had multiple aircraft here then and you needed to zoom in on or multiple steer points in a close area and you wanted to select a specific one or point your radar towards those then you could utilize the expanded modes 
Additionally, we have our aircraft's own ship symbol here, and this is the scanning azimuth and range of our radar. On this side, we have the freeze feature. We also have the data link to turn that on or change the modes of those. And this is for receiving data link information from all friendlies. The con or their contacts would be all to be displayed here. This would just be from the flight lead. And this would just turn all of those off if we only wanted to see ours. But generally speaking, we're going to leave that as on because it will help with your situational awareness. If you are in air to ground mode, on the selected steer point, you will see this big plus sign, which indicates that our sensors, our targeting pod, is slewed towards that. So we're, we want to set this back to, we'll just go to steer point 2 so I can demonstrate something here. This will also slew, or it indicates that our our sensors are, that's where they're looking. So they'll automatically will slew to or slave to whatever steer point is selected. So our fire control radar is looking at that. If we set our targeting pod, it's also going to be looking at that. Now you can see here something that I was talking about earlier. Because this steer point, steer point 2, is set to 20,000 feet, our T-Pod crosshair is just looking directly at that at 20,000 feet. But if we set this to steer point 1, which is at the airfield that's down there, you can now see that it's going to slave our T-Pod right to that point. And because our altitude is at 0, we can now see the airfield easily, so we could then go and find targets and engage those as needed. Additionally, on our HUD, see let me just set this to another steer point you can see here that we have this diamond in the corner pause this actually you can see this diamond in the corner which points to the direction of the steer point or where the steer point is because it's outside of the field of view of our hud it's just in this corner and has an x through it and then we have this which is called the tadpole which points towards the towards our steer point so if we unpause that and then flew towards it And see now that's visible on the HUD, and our t uh, the tadpole is just going to be pointed straight ahead and straight at it. Now, if we want to go back to steer point one here, which you can do either by using the dauber switch here, changing as I've been doing, or not the dauber switch, the uh, increment decrement switch. You could also go to steer point, say you wanted to set this to like steer point 5 and you didn't want to cycle through all those, you could just simply input 5 and then press enter and it would set it to that next steer point. The next thing that I'm going to talk about here is how to add steer points. So the first thing we want to do is find a location of something that we want to put a steer point at. We'll just say we want to put one right at this little town here. So. Up in the top corner, we're currently in MGRS coordinates up here, but we want to set this to our latitude longitude. So we want this format. And then I'm just going to take a picture of that, to make it easier. Oops. And then we're going to go back into our jet. And then we're going to press our ICP priority function button 4, where it says steer point. And then we're going to set this to 8, where we have an empty steer point, where we don't have anything entered. Now we're going to press our dauber switch down twice, so we get to latitude. Then our coordinates here, where we want to press northing, so it's 2, you can see it says end there, 6 is easting, 4 is westing, and then we have south is 8. So because we're in the northern hemisphere, we're going to press N, oops, got ahead of myself. N and then input our coordinates. So 36092284. Enter. Dauber switch down again. Easting. And then we're going to start with a zero this time. As you can see, that's three digits there. We're easting 0, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 8, 7. Enter. And then we're going to keep our elevation at zero. Well, actually, our elevation there is 1724 feet, so we'll enter that. Or, excuse me, 1742 feet. Enter that. You can set it to whatever altitude, I suppose. Then you can just hit return. And then on our HMD, we can see also the same thing. We have our diamond over there where the target, or the, excuse me, the um, 
our steer point is. And additionally, same symbology we have on our HUD as well as on our HMD. We have our range to the target here and here, and this is the selected steer point. So that's eight. So if I were to change this, you can also see it on our HUD there. If I were to change this to seven, it would give the same thing, range and current steer point selected, as well as our estimated time over steer point. And one or two last things here. First will be how to edit steer points. You do it essentially in exactly the same way that you would change, or that you would input steer points. So you're going to go to your steer point, ICP, priority, master mode, override, button, whatever you call it. Find your steer point, and then you could just click, you know, start inputting whatever it was. Just change that. Or, you know, you get you get the idea. You would, sim you would just change it exactly the way that you input it for whichever field. Uh, and the last thing here that I want to talk about is manual versus auto sequencing. So to do that, you want to use your dauber switch, make sure that you have the asterisks around man, press zero, and it will set to auto. So then that way, if you fly over steer point one, it will automatically switch it to steer point two. That can be useful if you are cruising for a while and if you're in autopilot mode. If you're in autopilot, like altitude hold and head steering select, it will fly you towards that steer point. Once you get to that, if you are in, I'm just gonna take over. This will be a perfect example because we're pretty close to this one. Just go altitude hold and steering select. Just set those up and down. And then once we get towards our steer point, because we are in auto mode, it will automatically have us turn towards the next steer point. Now we have, there we go. It just switched it to steer point three, and now we are turning towards that. Whereas if it was in manual mode, it wouldn't automatically switch it and you would have to do that manually. Oops, steer point navigation, fairly straightforward in this. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Hopefully though this was helpful, hopefully you learned something, hopefully your learning of the F-16 is coming along nicely. This is something that I use every single time that I use the F-16 in DCS and it's something that you will use constantly as well because it's the most basic form of navigation but anyway like i said hopefully this was helpful hopefully you learned something thank you very much for watching and i hope that i will see you in the next video